If we're talking about sound quality, this might be one of the worst pedals on the market when it comes to delays, but that doesn't stop it from being probably my favorite delay pedal. This pedal is the Ibanez DE7, and they don't make it anymore. I'll admit, I'm a little bit biased. This was my first ever, not only delay pedal, but my first ever pedal. So I spent hours and hours and hours playing with this pedal when I was like 15 years old, maybe. But whenever I hear this pedal, even to this day, it reminds me of a time where I wasn't seeing music and recording as this pursuit of just all things pure and clarity and high definition. It was just about cool sounds. And I think this pedal, as crappy as it is, really has a ton of character. Let me just show you. So the first thing you'll notice about this pedal is that the repeat quality or the delay quality, what you're actually getting out as signal is pretty lo-fi. It just immediately kind of distorts in this weird kind of lo-fi digital way. And at the time this came out, this was not considered a cool thing. Now I think it almost has like a little bit of charm to it. And you hear a lot of productions that have this sort of thing now. But when this came out, this was, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, like a $70 pedal, which for me at the time was a lot of money. But in the world of delay pedals, that is on the lower end. And you can hear it. I mean, if I turn it up even more, you'll hear how much it just destroys the signal. It almost has like this little crunch to it, especially when you introduce like chords. It kind of just crunches over. But my favorite part of this pedal was just how nasty and dirty the repeats can get. And you get this kind of crazy, spacey, infinite loop. And here's the best part. Awesome for making crazy sound design. And it just has like these really peculiar quirks. Like if you let it run for long enough, it just becomes chaos. And eventually it's almost like the signal doesn't know what to do. So it just turns into like this wall of sound. And once you have that, you can do something like almost becomes its own little instrument there. So I would do fun stuff like that. And I would combine that with like a loop pedal and do all sorts of crazy stuff. I really liked how you could almost turn this into like this thing that you could play with yourself. Hey, take it easy. But if you make the, if you make the delay long enough... You get like these cool little grooves that again if you had a loop pedal here now you could just kind of make some crazy kind of like and if you wanted to go a little bit like cleaner so you could just kind of let it die out by getting rid of the repeats but instead of using the echo function, you can go into delay. You can kind of get the same thing going. It's a little bit cleaner. 
And this one, if you put it on infinite repeats, kind of really crank it, you're not going to get that crazy sort of never-ending feedback. Automatically crazy psychedelic sort of loops. You can really cool things like that, just slow it way down. So, for example, that could already be like an intro to a song or an outro or something weird like that. There's just a lot of fun stuff that you can do with this. And I may be dating myself a little bit here, but you can't use this pedal without playing this riff. A little throwback. And I just really love how simple it is. There's not a lot of crazy stuff that you have on some of the newer delay pedals. There's not a bunch of different like uh, options in models to choose from. It's just echo and delay. Echo is a little bit dirtier and can infinitely repeat. Delay is more of your traditional digital delay. I personally always just kind of kept it on echo mode. And it just has a bunch of really cool things. You would just be able to switch here between um, your delay range in milliseconds. You'd have the shorter range here, and then that would be controlled by the delay time knob. But if you kind of hit it all the way to the left there for the shorter range, you kind of had a cool little slapback guitar. But generally, I'd always kind of play it right here in the middle. And you can really start playing around again with the repeats and stuff. And so even though I don't think most people think of Ibanez as a pedal company, more so just a guitar company that, let's be honest, makes most of their guitars on the lower end, relax. Relax, I'm not taking a shot at Ibanez players, but the point is, is that they're not really known for their, their pedals, but I, this pedal has such a soft spot for me, um, and I still love it, and you can still find some of them on eBay, I don't think they've reissued it or anything like that, but it's just kind of a classic, it's super sturdy, it's lasted, I mean, coming up on close to 20 years now, and it's still, it's a champ, and hold on. I'm sure other pedals do this, but this was the first time I ever saw anything like this. And this came in clutch when I was like a clumsy teenager playing in sloppy garage bands. Check that out. You click in your settings. You can stomp all over all you want. The thing ain't going nowhere. You're locked in, baby. I always thought that was a cool feature. And it's just a really fun pedal. And if you ever come across it, I highly recommend it. It's such a cool pedal with so much character and it's just simple and it's like, it's a little road warrior. I think everyone should play with this thing at least once. Something that I like to do sometimes is put it all the way on the slowest delay time and then just mess around and see what happens. Don't think. Just pick a note. Wait till it repeats.
once you had a cool little weird psychedelic loop going, I thought it was always really fun to like speed it up a little bit. And you would just come up with really unique sort of like little loops like that, stuff that I would have never been able to just sit down and write. So for that, I love this pedal. Super inspiring. And ultimately, I think that's what pedals should be about. It's not always about amazing quality. And then it doubles over. It gets crazy. gets crunched up. The digital bits can't take it. And then even when you go back down, it's gone. It's not the original sort of loop that you had. So super destructive in a really cool way. So I leave you with that. It's not all about the best gear, the most high quality gear. It's not about that. It's about being inspired. And if a crappy pedal inspires you, then own it. Because I love this thing. And I'm not going to let anybody tell me otherwise. Thanks for watching. If you like content like this, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you have your own crappy pedal that you love, why don't you leave a comment below and let me know what it is. Maybe I'll check it out myself on this channel. All right. Take it easy. Uh -huh.